Hello everyone and welcome to this second truffle video where we're going to look at coding and migrations and then in the last video we're going to look at testing. I did part one way back um, a long time ago and we went through installation and just some overview walkthrough of what it is but this time I think we would do more development work in Truffle and see how we can actually build applications, decentralized applications and smart contracts in Truffle um, as you would if you were to do this professionally to build or sell project applications, smart contracts or if you're doing an ICO or whatever we're going to take it step by step. So today it's going to be quite a simple contract. It's going to be more focused on Truffle and how it works rather than the contract because we're going to code a very simple contract. Uh, nothing advanced and then maybe in a future video we can look at actual smart contract that does something interesting like an ICO contract, crowd sale contract, other types of contract but you need to have followed along the previous video or at least installed the truffle and um, then we're going to go to the terminal we're going to create a new directory for our project and let's see what we're going to use here we'll do truffle uh, part two whatever you want to call it And in here we'll do truffle init that will uh, initialize a truffle um, truffle directory for us here. So we have all of the contracts and migrations and test files that we need and the configuration. So let's go into contract and see what we have here. We only have our migrations contract. So let's create a new contract. Hello dot sol. And then we'll open up that in our favorite editor or your editor of choice. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me open this up. I'll open up the folder for us. And then we have our contract in here. It's completely empty. So as I said, this is going to be a very simple contract. Uh, we're just going to do a simple hello world contract. Zero dot. What is it? 4.25 right now. Contract, hello world. In here we'll have a string name constructor and it's going to take string name. It's public. And here we'll set name equals name. We will um, do a get name function uh, that's going to be public view returns string We're going to return name and then we'll do a set name and that is only public Like that so that is our contract and um, so nothing fancy here we'll do that in a future video let's focus on the migrations file so uh, let's save that and then take a look at the migrations file so here we have the initial migration and this is just to keep track of all the migrations we're doing in the future so in order to actually create the migration that is going to deploy our contract correctly we need to create a new file here uh, let's see new file and it's going to be called you need to start with a two so that means that will be the second migration to run we always need to run the initial migration first and then we can run our second migration i'll name it deploy hello so we're going to start here by actually getting and requiring our contract so we'll create a constant and this will be called Let's just call it hello and oh i see i missed to call this a js file of course this needs to be a js file so dot js there we go const hello is equal to artifacts dot require that is how we get an actual contracts file and this is called uh this will be called hello world so it's actually the name of the contract so after this, we'll type module.exports 
and that is going to be equal to a function where we'll have the deployer which is something that we get from truffle which helps us deploy contracts and in here we specify uh for example let's say we want to have well let's actually just do deployer dot deploy and here we'll deploy um hello like that and then you will notice that we actually needed need to have a an argument here to the constructor where we have the name and that will be passed on here so here we will pass on our arguments we could have multiple arguments here we could have numbers but we're gonna make it um, make it a bit more um, what do you call it clean a bit cleaner so instead of that we're going to have an actual um, an actual constant that is our um, name so we could have for example this is how i usually do my migrations file if i have a big uh, a big uh, a big migrations contract with a lot of different uh, contracts and variables i do a settings object so here we'll have hello settings and this would be an object where we could have name equal to set my name and in this case that would be the only thing but you would have a bunch of different things here and then you could access them down here um, we'll look at that in a future video when we have more advanced contract but for now we'll just have that and then we'll do hello settings dot name and that would be a cleaner way to do it but it might be a bit ridiculous for this contract here and once we have this we can go ahead and try this thing out so we'll open up the terminal again and then we will do truffle develop and this will actually start uh, a local ethereum node so we have all of our accounts and private keys uh, and um, i'll show you in a future video where we'll do a more advanced contract how we can actually use these accounts inside the inside the um, migrations file because when we deploy tokens and such it's very important which owner owns what tokens and if we mint tokens who will they be minted to and all of the permissions and stuff stuff that we set but for now we're just going to check here so it compiles so let's type compile this will compile all of our contracts and uh, let's see oh yeah did i miss this do i need to have a space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I have another compiler version. I need to um, I need to edit this file here so it is 24 instead. Let's do that again. And there we go. Both of them compiled fine. And then we can do migrate. So here we can see that it has been uh, it deployed the migrations contract, which we always have to do. But here you can see running migrations deploy hello.js. It deployed hello world and here is the address of that and what we can do now is we can actually interact with this contract so here we can actually do hello let's see what was it called hello world at and then here we'll copy the address so we hit, had the address here we'll paste that into there and here we can do for example get what was it called get name and we'll do dot call like that and here we'll get Philip. And we could also do set name. And we could set this to, let's say, Philip2. And it doesn't return anything. And then we'll call it again. Oh, wait, that's actually not how we do it. We When we do a setter, we just do like that. And then we'll get the transaction details. And then we can do get name again. And we'll see that it's Philip2. Uh, call is actually when we only want to get a variable we want to read data from the blockchain it doesn't actually write anything to the blockchain that we need to that and we need to write two blockchains when we do of course the set name because we want to change something and then we don't do a uh, call like that instead we just have the arguments here so we can change it again to philip philip two three four and we can get the name again and it has changed um if you wanted to make a change to this contract and uh, deploy it once again, you would do, uh, because if I do <clears throat> the migrate command again, 
you'll see that everything is up to date. Uh, it says network up to date, then I can do reset. That will deploy it again. So if I change something and I'll redeploy it, I will have to do reset. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at, um, let's see, we're going to look at tests uh, to do a basic test. Unit tests are incredibly good when you're deploying uh, solid contracts and you want to make sure that everything works as, um, as you want it to do too. And that's incredibly important when we develop tokens because right now, you know, Ethereum is all about programming money, right? It's open finance. We can program money for the first time ever. It is vital that our contracts work as we uh, want them to and don't have any bugs. And tests can help us achieve that. It doesn't mean that we'll have a bug-free uh, contract automatically, but we can definitely uh, have these tools to help ourselves build contracts that do the right thing. That's what I'm going to do in the next video. And then we'll look at a more uh, advanced example in the video after that, where we'll deploy probably an ICO or a token or crowd sale of some sort, which is more realistic, which requires more work. So I hope you stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I know many of you are watching are not subscribed. I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or hit the dislike button if you did not enjoy the video. I don't know how you could do that. And uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions or comments in general. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video.